On today's show, we've got a full reaction following the Senators' cut down to their 23-man roster that will start the regular season. And despite an impressive preseason for 7th overall pick Carter Yakimchuk, the Ottawa Senators announced they're sending him back down to juniors. We'll get into all that, plus a wild day on the waiver wire. Could the Sens have interest in a left-shot defenseman? That and more on today's Locked On Sens. This is Brady Kachuk, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, you are locked on to the Ottawa Senators, the only daily podcast covering the Sens. On the outskirts of enemy territory, I'm Ross Levitan, alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. You can also follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter, LockedOn.Senators on Instagram. You can find us free and available everywhere you get podcasts, including on YouTube. Today is Monday, October 7th, and Pilsy, the Ottawa Senators made it through the preseason without any major injuries. Uh, I'm so glad the preseason is over, Ross. Although one player on IR, Matthew Highmore on IR for the Ottawa Senators, but uh, as entertaining as it was, I'm kind of done with the gong shows. I'm done with the back and forth. If your team wins, preseason means everything. If your team loses, preseason means nothing, and the Getting a week break from the Habs fans is something I know I'll enjoy, Ross. You might not enjoy that, but uh, I'll enjoy my time off from the Habs. Next time we see the Habs, we'll be in La Belle Provence next Saturday. Make sure you're following along on social media for all the shenanigans we'll get up to, including the shenanigans that'll start our trip in the nation's capital on Thursday. Last week, we told you that the Glebe Central Bub buses were sold out, and we weren't lying. But Blair and the crew at Glebe Central Pub were like, hey, we don't want to exclude any Sens fans. So there is a third Woo! bus. We've got a convoy heading to the CTC. Three buses. So you can still go get your tickets. GlebeCentralPub.com. Now, of note, I don't know if y'all have been to the Glebe Central Pub, but getting Math Guy 94 plus another 46, that's too hard for me. 142. That's a lot of people in the GCP. So get there early if you want to come for a pint. Space will be limited inside, but there are tickets available for the shuttle. So get yours at GlebeCentralPub.com. Pilsy, I love Ottawa. I love Ottawa in the fall. The leaves are changing colors. A bit of bite in the air in the morning. Hockey's back. And man, what better way to start the season than against the Stanley Cup champs? Yeah, I mean, I could pick 30 other opponents I would like to see at the home opener. Actually, no, scratch that 29. Uh, Vegas and Florida, probably the two teams that have Ottawa's number the best. But it's a new season. The vibes are at an all-time high at the home opener. So I'm excited. So excited about that. But we've got a lot to get to beforehand. Like yesterday, the classic final cut down roster day. All NHL rosters must be finalized by 5 p.m. tonight, Eastern time, which means yesterday just goes wacky on the waiver wire. And for the Ottawa Senators, they put two players on waivers, Jan Yannick and Adam Gaudet. For me, those were the two guys who had the best camps of those on the bubble. Zach McEwen makes this team. Zach Ostapchuk makes this team. What were your thoughts when you saw that come over the wire? Well, when that happened, Ross, I revisited our conversations before where we talked about unique and Godet needing waivers and for us that was like okay they're probably going to keep them up because they need waivers which makes sense that's logical thinking but I kind of overlooked the fact that about 3,000 players go on waivers at the exact same time and most of the time most of the time no one even gets claimed because other teams are trying to flush out their own roster spots so I think I was thinking about it this morning and maybe it's the fact that they're like, okay, if we send them through waivers now, they're likely not going to get claimed. But if we keep them up and they play, I don't know, 10 games or whatever, and you realize it's not a fit, then you send them on waivers. I think there's probably a higher chance that someone does claim one of those two guys. Well, you can put someone on waivers and if they clear, they don't have to clear for another 30 days or 10 games, whichever comes first. So yes. maybe they're trying to sneak guys True. through, but the rosters have to be set. That said, 
when guys get claimed, sometimes they just go deliver a pizza to Anaheim and they come right home after, right? So you never know yeah. what could happen this time of year. But I do think based on merit that Jan Yannick and to a lesser extent, Adam Gaudet, although he scored in every single game that he yeah. played. I, I don't know really what the rationale is other than you're playing two big teams, two two teams that you've had uh, extracurriculars with at the start of the season with Florida and Montreal being the first two games. So I don't know if they just want a little McEwen's meat in the lineup for one or two of those games. But Zach Estabchuk, I think just this just confirms what we already knew. The organization is extremely high on the upside of this player. Yeah, I... I don't know. I, I feel like this might be a bit of a mistake, Ross, just because I feel like it would do Zach Stapchuk better to get middle six time in Belleville rather than fourth line minutes. And who knows? He might not even be in the lineup every single game uh, in Ottawa. So I'm an Stapchuk guy. I'm happy he's getting another opportunity. He's already got a handful of games in the NHL last season, but it was a little bit surprising for me. Like if we're looking strictly at who outperformed two in the preseason, Zach Stapchuk wasn't even on my list of contenders for fourth line center based on uh unique Godet. Um that like those two guys I thought were the ones battling for it. So a little surprising there. We'll find out at 2 p.m. Eastern if they've cleared or been claimed on waiver. So we'll touch on the waiver wire a little bit at the end of the show. Again, we know it's going to age out quickly. So follow us on Twitter at Send Central for the latest. However, the team is on the ice for practice. And Claire Hanna, our girl, gets the win today. First one to tweet the lines out. And this is the day you want to be first, right, Pilsy? Because what are the lines going to look like? Oh, wait. It's a little different for Ottawa because congratulations are in order yep. to the Giroux family, Ryan and Claude Giroux, welcoming their third child, Charlie Giroux, into the world. Or Charles Giroux into the world. Another Chucky for the Senators organization, but he's not at practice today. I think we'll give him a maintenance day for that one, eh, Bills? Well, yeah, Ross, typically you don't want to have players that are one day old uh, playing on your team. So I think it is good for Charlie's development to have him sit out for a little bit. Yeah, just for a bit. But we expect Giroux to clothe, that is, to be packed on the ice for practice tomorrow. But in this case, it's kind of interesting to me that Nick Cousins is the one who steps up to play on that line with Stutzla and Kachuk. Again, not in a game, but just the fact that that's where they go in practice. Because my first initial thought was, does that mean that Nick Cousins is the 13th forward? Because it would be easier to get some reps with all the other guys, right? But I think this is just a situation where you want to get a guy reps. That to say, the first line will be Tim Stutzla with Brady Kachuk and Nick Cousins on either wing. I like this line a lot. Josh Norris is flanked by Ridley Gregg on the left and Drake Batherson on the right. The third line, oh my goodness, we're in midseason form. We've got Shane Pinto, where's number 12 in the middle, number 57, <laughs> David Perrault on the left, and Michael Amadio wearing number 22 on the right. The fourth line, Zach Stavchuk, is between Noah Gregor and Zach McEwen. On the back end, Jake Sanderson and Artem Zub, Thomas Shabbat, Nick Jensen, and Tyler Clevin is with Travis Hamanick in goal, Linus Allmark. And Anton Forsberg, what's your initial reaction to seeing Travis Green's first full practice with the Ottawa Senators? Well, first off, Ross, that number 57 for Pinto has burned you a couple times here. And it's a tough look when the picture is Shane Pinto with his big number 12 on the mm -hmm. helmet. But, hey, we're not in regular season form yet. That's okay. That's why um, we're getting these heavy skates out of the way during the week. Yeah, exactly. We'll have a bag skate for you, a bag graphic making uh, practice for you after this one. Rose. Thursday, I'll be in. I'll be in playoff form Thursday. Okay, good. Love it. Um, yeah, I'm a little intrigued by Cousins being the the placeholder guy for Giroux on that top line. I'm not sure if that's good or bad for Cousins or what that means. Um, so we'll see how that goes because I consider him a lock to play on this team more often than not. Uh, McEwen probably would be the odd guy out in my opinion. Uh, and then everything else is kind of what we expected, right? Uh, Sanderson with Zub, Shabbat Jensen, Clevin. I think Clevin and JBD, that 
wouldn't have been the best bottom pair. Now, obviously, JBD, we've been praising him for his shot blocking and defensive game, but I think the Senators are going to look to have a veteran guy with Clevin, especially since, unfortunately, Clevin didn't really wow anyone in the preseason. I mean, it's a long season, so there's still a lot of time. And that has also led speculation to believe that the Ottawa Senators might be claiming a left shot defenseman. We'll get to that later. But I think this is this is how we would want the lineups to go. And I like the fact that Prawn and Amadio are on the third line because they're the type of players that are brought in to help this roster, I'm talking about the forwards, not be top heavy, not just rely on that top line or that second line to click for offense. You get guys like Prawn and Amadio, middle six players that can go up and down the lineup and you put them on the third line. Hopefully that bolsters the bottom six scoring. A trend that we've seen in the National Hockey League, I'm sure Travis Green is no different, that they like duos up front. And then you kind of plug and play the third guy. It's been Stutzel and Kachuk. It's been Norris and Batherson. And it's been Pinto and Amadio. Or has it been Stutzel and Giroux? Oh, I guess that top line's been together since day one. They haven't messed with that at all. Yeah, yeah, for, for this year. Yeah, last year, though, it was Timmy different and Giroux were the pairs. Yeah, Different coach, but yep. I like what we're doing here and the way things are set up because you can move things around and the chess pieces. They look good on paper. Look, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I've already admitted to it. I've been hurt before, ready to get hurt again. You're the Kool-Aid but- man at this point, Ross. Anytime someone on Twitter has something bad to say about the sense, you smash through that wall with the oh, yeah. Yeah, well, the oh, yeah is in the form of Linus Allmark. How about his attitude after the preseason where it's like, look, I get what Bruce was trying to ask. It came at the expense of Bruce, unfortunately, but it was an awesome moment to see. But, like, I get what he was trying to ask. Just, like, have you felt like you've accomplished everything you wanted to get done in the preseason to move on to the regular season? But Linus had no time for that. And he didn't even – the first question from Gord Wilson, too. And he goes, say what? (laughs) He's an all-time character, but yeah. he brings that like sense of elevated expectations. He doesn't yes. give a care in the world about things that don't matter. 5-1-1 one, and one in the preseason, crumple it up, Kobe right into the garbage can. It doesn't matter. The real work starts on Thursday against the Florida Panthers, and the Sens have three days of practice leading up to a game day where we will be boots on the ground in Section 321. Yes, Unfortunately, sir. We won't be watching Carter Yakumchuk as the 19-year-old defenseman was sent back to the Calgary Hitman. We'll share our thoughts with that next and then look at the waiver wire and see who the Senators could place a claim for as a left shot option. That's all coming up next. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Indeed. Look, the Ottawa Senators are looking to hire a bottom pair left shot defenseman. Maybe they should check out Indeed because Indeed is driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate actually isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality of matches compared to other job sites. So what are you waiting for? Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on the Locked On Senators podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub, right in the heart of the Glebe, 779 Bank Street, where the vibes are free at the GCP. We're just a few days away from our friggin' final visit. We can't wait. Not final, but finally, we get to go to the GCP. I love going there. I love getting my buffalo chicken wrap. I like the wings after the game, too, and all encompassing with the Send Shuttle. They pick you up and bring you right to the CTC. They leave an hour and 15 minutes before the game, and then they'll bring you right back 20 minutes after you just meet exactly where you got off the bus and you beat the traffic all the way back to the GCP. 
this Thursday. We've added a third bus, three buses, amazing, to the Glebe Central Pub. So make sure you go get your tickets at GlebeCentralPub.com. Check off that, yes, you heard about us on Locked On Senators, and let's get the good times rolling. Pilsy and I are going to get there nice and early, and we are going to be green light ready to go at the CTC. So can't wait to see everyone there on Thursday. It's at 779 Bank Street, right in the heart of the Glebe. Limited space available inside to hang out before, but the bus is available. So get your tickets, GlebeCentralPub.com, and go check out the Send Shuttle. The GCP, where the vibes are free, go visit them at 70, 779 Bank Street and let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. All right, Pilsy. I've got a little pep in my step today. We didn't oh, even yeah. mention it off the top, but we've changed the intro. Look, thank you very much to Tim Stutzla and Jake Sanderson for your service over the last, yes. what, three years? Yep. Having those two guys intro the show. But new season, why not get the captain to make his statement? The most valuable player to the Ottawa Senators now intros the show. Thank you, Brady. Thank you very much to everyone as well for watching our feature film over the weekend. More outfit changes than a Taylor Swift concert <laughs> as Pilsy and I put together every single time we did our segments on the organizational value rankings. And it's a three hour and 45 minute bonanza online. I might go through and actually put in the timestamp so people can do each player. Um, We'll see on that. I'm not promising and, it though. That's a new, uh, new fun engagement contest, Ross. Whoa. I'd like people to rank our best outfits. Oh, well, I know that um, Guy Lane is going to say that when we're wearing our Sens hats like we are today, she loves that. And Hey, it's game week. We're absolutely all dialed in. It's all Senators all the time. And this is officially a Calgary Hitman podcast as well for the yes, foreseeable sir. future. Senators have sent down their seventh overall pick who happened to have seven points in the preseason, played five games, led the team in ice time, in Detroit against what was a complete NHL roster, dangled the complete NHL roster of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He had two goals, Pilsy. They were both game-winning goals. One dangle, one slap shot. As I tweeted back at the Senators when they made the announcement, heck of a camp, young fella. Yeah, and that's the thing. Carter Yakinchuk was there the whole time because he deserved to be there the whole time, Ross. I would even argue he deserved to get a couple games experience in the NHL, but look, it's been hard for me, but when I make a stance, I usually try to stick to it, even when people are throwing tomatoes at me and booing. I've said all along, and I've maintained it, I think it is the right move to have Carter Yakumchuk play in juniors this season. It just it would be tough to find a spot that makes sense to play him. Obviously, the best spot would be with Jake Sanderson, but do you really want a rookie right shot defenseman going up against other teams, top offensive uh, opponents every night. That's a lot to ask. The second pairing wouldn't have made a lot of sense with Shabbat. I think you need a more defensively responsible partner. And then third pairing of Clevin and uh, Yakumchuk. I don't think that would do either of those guys many favors. And then Yakumchuk playing 13, 14 minutes a night, I don't think is best for his development either. But that's not to say... I think he could have played in the NHL and it could have gone well. And I hear Sens fans that are saying Carter Yakinchuk makes this team better. And there was a lot of, uh, when I uh, quote tweeted that, a lot of people saying, well, this doesn't give me a lot of confidence that the Sens are in win now mode. But look, I think you let Carter Yakinchuk go back to the WHL. I do think it's very likely he gets traded. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, because I found it was interesting. The Calgary Hitmen just yesterday announced their leadership group, their captain and four alternates. It just felt like, aren't you waiting for Yak? And they've already played five games. They're two and three so far. Um, Medicine but, hat, please. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be awesome. Wagon. Yeah, uh, but I just think it makes more sense for him to dominate in juniors, work on some other parts of his game, the defensive side of his game, the skating. We know he's got the offense down there, the physicality. He's already shown that and figured that out. Those are two of the biggest reasons why the Ottawa Senators drafted him at seventh overall. Dominate in world juniors. He'll, he, Sens fans, you'll get to see him in Ottawa. It's just going to be at Christmas rather than October. Um, and I, I just think it's the right move. And Ross, if the Senators were in a point where they felt like they could 
be a serious Stanley Cup contender this year, then yeah, you got to take advantage of a talented defenseman on an entry-level contract. That would be a different story. But I just think it's also smart cap-wise to kick that can down the road and start his entry-level contract up next season as opposed to this season. I did think he earned a nine-game tryout where he wouldn't Agreed. have earned a year on his contract. Yep. However... And I'm not trying to be a fence sitter here. I think he should have stayed. And I would have done. I know I keep saying I probably sound like a broken record like they did with Shabbat years ago. Keep him around for a month. Let him get into a spot start in a couple games. Let him go on a road trip. I know that's something that some people agree with. Some people don't. That's fine. But we've been saying all along the first 21 games of the season are three seven-game playoff series in terms of the importance that the Ottawa Senators need to get off to a strong start after faltering out of the gate for the last three years in a row. So I don't think you can take any chances on a player that you just, like you said, there's no natural fit where he's protected and with somebody who can help him out. If they had a veteran left shot defenseman on the third pair who was playing in a rocking chair... I think I would be able be a little more confident in having him there, but fair enough. I trust the process with this. I'm more upset about Jan Yannick on waivers yesterday, honestly, than I am about Yakim Chuck going back down. But before we, we get to Yannick and Godet, I want to ask you this, because people are very, there's a difference of opinions on this, and I see both sides of the argument. Some people might have been slamming the steering wheel at me saying kicking his entry-level deal a year later is a better idea, because a lot of people are of the mind burn through that entry-level contract quicker so that the player isn't projecting as good in their career. So then their first contract out of their entry-level deal, you can get them a little cheaper while, let's say, well, they are kicking his entry-level deal. So Carter Yakinchuk now has three more years to get even better than he already is, and that's going to rise raise the price on his deal after his ELC. Where do you fall on uh, that side of the discussion? It just means that he's helping the Ottawa Senators. So at that point, it's all good with me. And look, Thomas Shabbat has four years left from now. So it'll be three years. Carter Yakumchuk's entry-level contract will be ending the same time Shabbat's $8 million deal is off the books. That said, hell of a camp for yeah. Carter Yakumchuk, the old Guy Boucher. You don't feed steak to a baby. But my goodness, he was he was doing his part. And I thought he had a fantastic camp. He's going to be a fun prospect to track this season, Pilsy, as he tears up the WHL, where he scored 30. Yes, 30 30. goals last season. Final note on Yakim Chuck. He just turned 19, one of the oldest players from this draft. So you're you're already a head start over your peers in terms of your physical maturity and all that. I just hope that he focuses on his skating all season long and doesn't try to play hero puck as he's not on a great team. Just work on the fundamentals. Be sound fundamentally, and your skill will take over from there. We know he's got the hands and the shot. It's just about being a calm NHL player, and it'll take time, as it does with all players' development. Yeah, exactly. I He is going to light up the dot. Like, he, honestly, he might set some records in the WHL. It's going to be insane. And we'll be following it every step of the way. We're also going to be following the waiver wire coming up in just over an hour from the time of this recording. So you probably already know, but why don't we give you a little insight into some of the players the Sens could be interested in as the waiver wire picks up. That's all coming up on today's Locked on Sens. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. You guys know that FanDuel is the official online sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network, and for a good reason. They're North America's number one sports book. So you can start the NHL season off with a big return on FanDuel. When you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You can get started with a $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Ross, you know hockey is around the corner. It's similar when you're going on vacation. You know it's coming around when you can see the weather for that vacation destination. Well, Ross, we can see the weather for our vacation destination of Ottawa and Montreal, but On FanDuel, we can also see the lines for the home opener. Ross, we're going to play Guess That Line. What do you think the Ottawa Senators' odds are in the home opener against the Florida Panthers? Money line. 
the Ottawa Senators odds are a hundred percent that I'm going to be riding and I'm going to go with plus 135. Plus 105. Whoa! So a, little, a little closer than you might think. The over-under set at over six and a half. And the Florida Panthers are minus 126 money line. So if you're drinking the Kool-Aid along with Ross... What's to- it in regulation? In regulation... FanDuel, 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 FanDuel. I'm going to guess plus 185. Plus 150, plus okay. 150 in regulation, three-way money that. line on FanDuel. So if you're confident, head to FanDuel right now and get your bets in. Forget about the future bets. Forget about prop bets and all those special bets. It's time to bet on real, actual, live game action. So do it at the best spot possible, FanDuel.com. All right, Pillsy made it to segment three here on the first day of the rest of our lives. The NHL preseason is behind us, and that leaves us with an entire season ahead. 82 games, and it all gets going October 10th against the Florida Panthers at home. We'll be in section 321. Can't wait to be at the rink. And if you're going to Montreal this weekend for the game on Saturday, Stay tuned later in the week. We'll uh, we'll plan out what we're going to do there, where we're sitting, all that. But I think the Peel Pubs will play pre-game. So if you're going to the game in Montreal, you want to walk to the rink in a Sens army, then let us know in the comments below. Pillsy, the waiver wire is an annual freakout day. Yep. So many names on this uh, on this list. It's almost too much to filter through. And I almost hope that NHL GMs feel the same way because I think Jan Unique's probably one of the better players on that waiver list. But there's also a lot of left shot defensemen. And we've been talking about it. Not a whole lot of competition in camp for Tyler Clevin. So is it worth it now that Ottawa has an empty roster spot on their 23-man roster now that Yakumchuk has been sent down? Does it make sense for them to claim a defenseman? And if so, who are you looking at? I think it does make sense, Ross. Um now, we should note, you have to keep this player in the National Hockey League if you claim them. Yeah. I, I just think they're uncomfortable with Tyler Clevin being the everyday third-pair left-shot defenseman. Uh, are we going to get into the Brandy talk right away, or how do you want to do this? I don't think it's going to be Eric Brandstrom, Pilsy. <laughs> Look, I can, what a wild day. Eric Brandstrom. For those that don't know, traded from the Colorado Avalanche to the Vancouver Canucks. And Vancouver Canucks fans are are already trying to plot where he's going to fit in on their decor. I'll I'll tell you, no spoilers. It's going to be with Christian Willannon in Abbotsford. Immediately put down on waivers. And I mean, look, Eric Branstrom at $2 million would not have made any sense on this team. I fully am willing to admit that. But at 800 k 800k how do you think he feels remember he said he was surprised he didn't get qualified yeah and now i'm sure he's super surprised that he got traded immediately and then when he gets traded put on waivers verbal meme it's the uh vince mcmahon where he's like this and then he at the end he falls out of his chair it's like the progression of how wild it is yeah i honestly i feel bad for the guy like i don't think 150 nhl games yeah i don't think he deserves this and clearly nhl general managers don't don't the one Swedish NHL GM takes a flyer on him. Yeah, d- they don't see the the value there, and uh, and that's fine. Uh, I don't think the Ottawa Senators are going to claim Brainy as much as I'd love to uh, make it a further my Brainy bit even more by championing him and having them bring him back. But I will maintain they could do a lot worse than Brainy for 800k. That's a guy you know, and he's a guy that if. There's injuries in the decor. It's nice to have a player like him around, but I just, I don't, I don't honestly like Brandy coming back to that dressing room would just be weird for everyone. I don't think, I think he would honestly retire rather than go back to the Ottawa centers. Cause that's not how you want to come back. Almost 2000 votes on Twitter at Sen central claim the franchise. 45% say yes. 55% say no. Uh, that makes you look pretty good for having him as one of your pol- most polarizing senators in our summer ring of honor. I can't believe you and Nick Spence mocked me for, for that pick. It, it is so clear that he is so polarizing in this franchise. So 
55 to 55 with almost 2,000 votes. I love it. That's awesome. And I posted that for content purposes. I do not think they should be claiming him. But our good friend Ryan Hinman, Send Central Citizen, uh, posted a few of the names that could be of interest. All left shot defensemen. Samuel Bolduc, six foot four, 220 pounds. Hey, just like the Sens, he sorted this by uh, height, uh, which I appreciate. <laughs> uh, Matthew Robertson. Isaac Phillips, Tyler Tucker, William Lagason, and Sebastian. No, not that, Aho. And here's what I'll say. One, funny, because William Lagason is Tim Stutzla's only career NHL fight, where he oh. fought him during the uh, the COVID season. Tyler Tucker fought Brady Kachuk. Yeah. And Samuel Bo Duke is six foot four, 220 pounds. And I'm leaning at Tyler Tucker, and here's why. Okay. Rob DeMaio, the Ottawa Senators Director of Player Personnel, just came from the St. Louis Blues organization. He has intimate knowledge about what type of player Tyler Tucker is. Six foot two, 205 pounds, hits like a truck. I mentioned he fought Brady Kachuk, right? Yep. I think that's the guy. I think he's the guy. He's the oldest player on this list, but not older. Like Lagason's 28, journeyman. He's played everywhere. I think Tyler Tucker's the guy. I think sometimes players need that second team. Not saying that Tyler Tucker has 58 NHL games under his belt is going to be a huge difference maker. But I think I'm more confident with him as the third shot left defenseman to start the season. Yeah, I think Tyler Tucker is a good prediction, Ross. So I'll give mine. Uh, 52. I think I said 58 games. 52 games. Last year, he played 26 games and was plus one with 42 penalty minutes. I'm going with Samuel Bolduc. Uh, Six foot four, 220 pounds. You know that is music to the Ottawa Senators' ears, Ross. And you mentioned it. Sometimes you just need a second team, a fresh start. He's been with the New York Islanders his entire career, undrafted. Uh, oh, no, not undrafted. My bad. Second round pick in 2019 by the New York Islanders. And he's already got NHL experience. He has 51 games in NHL experience, eight ah, points in that identical. time. Yeah, very similar. And looking at his game logs from last year, he played a good chunk last year. Like he was in 34 games with the Islanders, so finished with five points. And he's playing 12, 15, sometimes even 17 minutes a night. So he would be comfortable in that type of role. So I think that's a good player the Ottawa Senators could look at. And as we know, they're championing the Ottawa Gatineau region. So <laughs> getting a little francophone blood in the mix, I think, couldn't hurt either. Ce n'est pas mal. There's no question about that. Now, Matthew Robinson, another name that's thrown out there, another former second-round pick, 2019 draft, Edmonton Oil Kings. But he has not played in the NHL in his numbers last year in Hartford. Not great. Uh, Tyler Tucker, going back to him, 64 hits last year in 26 games. Whereas Samuel Bull Duke, although being much bigger, had 44 hits in 34 games. So more games and substantially less hits. So I, I'm just curious what they're looking for there as a left shot option. Obviously, none of these guys are extremely experienced. They're all kind of a flyer anyways, but it gives you another option. So I don't think it hurts. They have the spot on their roster. And worst case, doesn't work for a week. You put him on waivers, he either gets claimed again or you're bolstering a Belleville blue line that's already pretty deep and yeah. you can never have too many bodies we know with the in, um, how, the unpredictability of an AHL season. So I think that this end should take a flyer with one of those lists that Ryan Hinman uh, posted there, all the left shot defensemen. And by the yeah. time you're listening to this, you probably know whether we look like idiots or whether we've called it properly, but that's our take. So you're saying Samuel Bull Duke? Yes, sir. And I'm saying Tyler Tucker. All right, Pilsy, any final thoughts on today's show? Uh, final thoughts for me is the Belleville Senators. Don't forget about the Belleville Senators. They kick their season off this Friday on the road. So, I, Ross, I'm going to be looking at the Belleville Senators a bunch on FanDuel. I think this team's going to steamroll some teams down in the AHL, especially within the division. So keep an eye out for them for sure. All right. Wow. We've got, okay. Are we doing tomorrow? Are we doing hot takes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot takes tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow, hot takes. Wednesday, send Central Citizen. A really cool one. Chris Crawford's going to join us. He's going on the trip of a lifetime, and he's thinking about the Sens the whole way through. So we're going to get to that on Wednesday. And then Thursday, Pilsy. Thursday, we're going to be together again in our studio at the Levitan Residence in Ottawa, in Alta Vista, Ontario. Can't wait for that conversation and to get those game day vibes all the way through, or as Guy Boucher would say, up the roof. But for today, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. 
Thank you so much for watching, listening, subscribing, liking, commenting, leaving those five-star reviews. They all go a long way to helping us grow. This has been another edition of the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day.